to tell you exactly you know, who needs to write a research proposal. If you look at these leaflets, you know, it's crystal clear to everyone whether you need one or not. Maybe you don't need it at this stage, but you might be applying you know, to other universities and later on uh, after your MA studies, maybe you, you want to do a PhD either here or somewhere else. So it might be useful to uh, a number of people. So we have the Center for Academic Writing and what Robin was talking about is the, the self-access page. We have a self-access page. Uh, if you don't remember the exact you know, website, it doesn't really matter. Once you, once you type in self-access page or see the self-access page, um, it will come up, okay? Uh, so, yeah, just remember that we have a page, right? Now, about the self-access page, I have copied out uh, the, main, the main chapters that we have got here, okay? So, not only research proposals and CVs and statements of purpose, but other types of writing as well. You know, we have got uh, um, chapters on a lot of uh, issues relating to academic writing. Uh, I think 20 of them in total. And among them, one of them is about proposals. So, yeah, I, I, I think I have highlighted proposals, research proposals. Uh, if you really have to write a research proposal, I would suggest that you go there and check it because there are a lot of useful links there. There are uh, examples as well. So, I believe that uh, that could be quite useful. But also all the other uh, sites, you know, for oral presentations, outline, whatever. So do use us. It's free of charge for anybody, not just within CEU, but outside CEU as well. So I would say that that is interesting. Okay, so coming back to the research proposal, what are the purposes of the research proposal? Why are we writing this? You know, uh, Well, first of all, to convince others of the value of your research, especially you know, uh, your department and professors in, in your department, to show that it is valuable. Yeah? Uh, to demonstrate that you are an expert, yeah? that you are an expert uh, in the given field. And also to demonstrate that you are competent, you are able to do this. Okay? So I would suggest that when you have written the first draft or the second draft of your proposal, show it to somebody. Show it to somebody, a friend, and ask him or her, do you think that my project seems valuable? Do you think that I look like an expert in the, in the field? Do you think that uh, I seem competent enough based on my on my research uh, proposal because unfortunately, well, at least I myself, I can't judge this but for myself, but I can, I believe, uh, judge it for other people. And finally, to assist you as a planning tool, later on, you know, the rest research proposal is almost like a recipe, you know. Once you have a good recipe, you know how to cook the dish. That's, that's the proposal. So once you have a good proposal, you know what you have to carry out. You know what you have to, what you have to do. Okay. Now, what is it that professors and readers in general will be looking for in each and every proposal? Uh, probably answers to three questions. The first one: What are we going to learn from the proposed project that we don't know yet? What is new? What is it that we are going to learn? that we don't know yet. What is the novelty? What is uh, the contribution? Okay? If your answer is, well, I don't know, or maybe nothing new, then forget it. Then come up with another research proposal. Okay? So something that is, that is not there yet. Okay? Second, okay, maybe we don't know it yet, but why is it worth knowing? How does it, how can it make the, the world a better place? You know, what, what is the relevance of, of this uh, thing? Yeah? And finally, on what basis, how can we evaluate the validity of, this, of, of your conclusions? Right? So I think these are three things that you should definitely address in your, in your research, research proposal. Okay? Now obviously, as Robin has said before, always bear in mind your reader. And who is your reader? one or two professors in the department. So clearly, uh, 
you should do some research to find out about, about their research interests and their publications and their courses. What is it that, that they find important in that field? And how can you relate to that? Yeah? Um, I think you have much better chances if, if you find a topic that, that is relevant for some professors in the department, or, or at least one professor in the department, than if you come up with something that doesn't seem to be so relevant. Okay, now when you are actually writing uh, the proposal, well, first of all, give a title. Why am I emphasizing this? Because I would say proposal is not a title. Okay? And very, very often when we teach students, we find that they don't give titles. They just say proposal, essay, whatever. No, give it a title. And the title should really reflect what you are doing, what you are planning to do. Okay? So not just a piece of decoration, but something that is really about your, your proposed uh, research. Okay? So come, come up with a title. Probably you have to give the title at the very end rather than the beginning. But you know, when when the reader takes the, the piece of work, then that's the first thing they will see, right? So but you yourself probably you have to give the title or finalize the title at the very end. Okay? Well, if possible, the title should be meaningful, suggesting the topic. So what is the topic? What is the puzzle? What is the problem that we don't know yet and it's worth, know worth knowing? And maybe some suggestions as to what the answer might be, okay? Quite a lot to do, but, but, but people can do it, yeah? Of course you can use a double title. You know that these days double titles are quite fashionable. So something interesting, eye-catching, yeah? Uh, to start with, and then the second part could be more technical, talking about, about your own research. You don't have to, of course, but you can do it, okay? So that's the title, right? Probably not longer than 15 words. And then you move, move on to the, the introduction. Again, probably the introduction is the last chapter to finalize, but still, when the reader takes the, the proposal, they will read the introduction first. Okay, so what should you do in the introduction? Well, first of all, context. Put the whole thing into context, okay? And capture the reader's uh, interest as well. And again, you know, I'm emphasizing that the reader is the professor that you have in mind, okay? How can you catch his interest, okay? And what is the context? Sooner rather than later, give your definition, your key definition. I would say probably in the introduction, maybe later on you can come back to it, but in the introduction it doesn't hurt to define your key terms. Yeah? You know, in social sciences, and we are in social sciences, most of us, uh, any term you choose, any term you choose might have different interpretations and might have different uh, definitions. So when you are talking about democracy, what do you mean by democracy? Whose definition do you accept? Yeah? And what is your own definition? So please don't forget about definitions of keywords. Okay? So introduction, it shouldn't be more than maximum 10% of the whole research uh, proposal, I would say. Okay? Then maybe uh, the next chapter, the next big chapter, is the theoretical issues and the literature review. The literature review. Obviously, when you are applying for PhD, this has got to be very, very rich. Yeah? Uh, to show that, that you, you are an expert and you are competent, as, as we have said before. Okay? So, lots of supporting bibliographical references, I would say. That's important. Because you have to indicate that you know what you are talking about. Yeah? Uh, the more, the better. Okay? <coughs> Include the main authors that have written about your subject. Yeah? Definitely. And, very important, your research, how will it fill a gap? What is the gap and how can you fill it during your research? I think these are the main things that your professors want to know, your readers want to know when reading the literature review. Okay? Obviously, key research question, questions as well. You can put it into a separate chapter if you like, or it can be part of your literature review. I don't think it matters very much. 
But what really matters is one main question, okay? One big question that you want to answer. If you if you come up with ten different answers, uh, ten different questions, it's probably not such a good idea. Yeah, it's confusing. It's not focused enough. It means that you haven't thought about it carefully enough. So just one main umbrella question, okay? Maybe it can be reflected in the title as well, right? Of course, you may you might have a few sub questions, big umbrella question and a few sub questions. Okay? Indicate, you know, this is sub question number one, number two, number three. Make it very, very clear to the reader. Okay? If possible, not yes or no questions, but rather WH questions. What, when, why, especially why is this the situation? How, where? Okay? WH questions. How is also a kind of WH question, if you like, rather than yes or no especially in social sciences, you know, that, that could be a little bit simplistic. So when you have a yes or no question, turn it into, into a how question or a why question. It's relatively easy to turn it into, into a how or a why question, okay? But anyhow, one main question and a few sub-questions, and by a few I mean not more than five, six, definitely not 10, 20, 30, 50, whatever, okay? Um, and the answer shouldn't be immediately obvious. Because if the answer is obvious, then why on earth do you want to do this research? If everyone if everybody knows the answer and it's obvious, then why? Okay. Right. Um, then probably you will have a separate section called methodology or methods applied, okay? I think this has got to be the idea. That's one of the problems in, in research proposals that students don't give enough attention to their methodology. I think you should. Tell, tell your readers everything that you know about your proposed methodology. It might change, doesn't matter, but still, tell them everything that you know about it. What do you want to do as exactly as you can? Because it shows that you have thought about it uh, and you know what, what you want to do, okay? Uh, and why the methodology that you are suggesting, why is it the best? Uh, methodology that you could have. Maybe you could compare it with some other methods, right? Why is this the best uh, for your purposes? Okay, one or two paragraphs about that as well. Okay, and then finally you will have a conclusions uh, section, conclusions, indications of your research. So, again, emphasize, maybe it doesn't hurt, you know, to emphasize it again. Uh, what kind of new knowledge will my research produce? What is it that we don't know yet? Why is it worth knowing? Repeat it again. Um, and again, how will you evaluate uh, and ensure the validity of your conclusion? Okay, so that could be your concluding, concluding part. Okay, then when you are doing your uh, proposal, you must have a bibliography or references, okay? Make sure that you follow the standard format in your discipline. By standard format, I mean either embedded or footnoted. You know, some departments prefer embedded, others prefer footnoted. This is something that you have, you have to check. If it is embedded, then probably you say references at the end rather than bibliography. If it's footnoted, you might say bibliography. But make sure that you follow uh, the rules very, very, very carefully. If you don't know about the rules, I don't think I included that, but if you don't know the rules, go to the Chicago manual online. It's, it's available online, free of charge, so I think it's, it's, it tells you exactly and clearly how to put together the bibliography, how to give your references. Um, I th I, I'm quite sure that your professors will uh, evaluate you on this basis as well, whether you know how to give your references, okay? Uh, the format in your discipline and the format that your department requires. I think by doing a little bit of research, you can easily find out you know, what the requirements are uh, in your department, okay? Obviously, the longer your bibliography, the more convincing it might be, okay? Signs of a weak proposal. 
well, I haven't got, I'm not being positive enough because I'm not talking about size of a good proposal, a strong proposal, but a weak proposal. But I think they are easier to identify. So one thing is, it's too long. Okay, too long. And by too long, I mean that there is a lot of uh, information that is not necessary, not about your question, not about your research, uh, deviating. Okay, poor structure. So you don't have these sections. I think usually it works to have several sections with headings rather than words, 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 words for 10 pages. So poor structure. I don't know what is what. I don't know that this is the methodology. I don't know that this is the introduction. This is the conclusion. Um, that's a problem. Poor language use, obviously. Mistakes in your language. Um, it shows that you haven't had it checked. Technical terms inappropriately used. Without definitions, for example, or not in the right sense. That is a problem. Uh, the research is too ambitious. It's so ambitious that it's obvious to any reader that you can't possibly do it in the given time and with the given constraint. No literature review. I believe that if you have no literature review, you are probably out. So I don't think that your research proposal will be accepted if, if there is no literature review. Um, and if, if it's very weak or very poor, very short, then that again is the problem. No theoretical foundation that's very much related to the literature review. Major problem. Yeah. If, if there are costs involved, then uh, this is unrealistic, obviously. That is a problem. Yeah. Methodology, methods, not clear or maybe inappropriate for the given purpose. Yeah. No references, no bibliography. So these are the weak, the sites of the weak proposal. Yeah, can you see for it? Okay. Okay. Uh, some pieces of additional advice. Okay. So I can't generalize because a research proposal can be short or can be long depending on what is required. So make sure that you check exactly what the requirements are for length, for format, for deadline, and meet them uh, very, very, very carefully. Maybe, you know, it can be 10% longer, 10% shorter, but not more than that, okay? If it's twice as long, I think you are out, okay? uh, What Robin was talking about, time. Perhaps it, putting together a good research proposal takes even longer than putting together a statement Give yourself plenty of time, revise, 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 and take away and show it to a friend. I would, I would always say you know, that, that helps. Include uh, sections with headings. I think it's, it's a very practical piece of advice. Uh, when you are revising your, your proposal, then you know which section to revise. Not the whole thing, but maybe the methodology section, maybe the literature review, and you can, you can leave it. And also from the point of view of your reader, you know, the reader is guided if you have these headings. The reader knows what is what uh, if you have the headings it's very clearly laid out. Okay? Be very clear and consistent. Yeah? What do we mean by clarity and consistency? Well, if you consistency, if you were if you use a word, a phrase, a term in one sense, then use it in the same sense, all through the proposal. Okay. Uh, by clarity, I mean, you know, don't be too technical. Don't use overcomplicated structures. Simple is, is probably better. Yeah? But anyhow, ask somebody, ask a friend uh, to, to read it for you. And if your friend says, mm -mm, I'm sorry, I don't understand this part. I just don't understand it. Then maybe there is something wrong with that. Then try and read it. Okay? Again, always consider the the reader's expectations. Yeah? What do you think this professor, this particular professor, would like to see? Okay? Uh, and finally, use the self-access page of the Center for Academic Writing for further information, for further advice, uh, for models, and so on. Okay?
So good luck with your proposal writing. Okay. And now questions. Um, any any questions that we haven't addressed yet? Okay, can I get your comments? Yes. Yeah. Student. Uh, As a student. Okay. Yeah. As a current student. I did it last year. I just want to stress something what you already said and Robin said. Uh, the question of time. It's really important. Uh, Robin was joking that we, we are submitting our it's papers joke, like yeah. <laughs> like a, it's not a joke. It's true. <laughs> we are submitting our papers really like few hours before submission. You know, we have a really lack of time a bit, so it's necessary to stress that it's really hard to study at this university with a lot of readings. So perhaps you're not so busy as we are. Um, so I just want to say use your time wisely. And perhaps one month is time which is like good to, I don't say like dedicate every day of this month to your research proposal, but you know, you, you have enough time to think about it, to talk to some of your friends. This is very important. Um, like ask what do you think about it, etc. Uh, another thing what I think is important is that it's not grammatical exercise. I think grammar is important and I, I, I would advise you to really ask some native speaker to check your proposals, definitely. And I think it's also good to ask somebody who's not really familiar with the field to check the proposal. Not only somebody who's familiar, this can be helpful, of course, but somebody who's totally not familiar. Because such people can help you to, they, they, they will exactly say you, oh, you know, I don't really understand what you want to say by this. Because those people are not so familiar, so it's actually much more helpful for you to get their feedback. Yeah. Um, then something what you were talking about is um, also the topic, uh, catchy topic. Uh, I know some people, professors from my previous university, who were really like, so one particular professor was really smart and everything, great professor. He applied to CEU and he was not admitted. Perhaps because the department was not really interested in this catchy topic. So sometimes you really think that you have something catchy, this is so interesting and unusual, good, better than something boring, but it can happen that the department yeah, doesn't totally fit. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't fit because they don't have, for example, professors who would help you with the topic. Uh, or you don't have uh, books related in the library related to the I wouldn't believe that because the library is really good. But uh, talk to professors at this university or talk to students, current students. Um, so yeah, that's what you were saying about two ambitious projects also. Sometimes it's like, really like it's too ambitious, you cannot do that. And I wouldn't say like mainstream, so don't be afraid of mainstream topics. Uh, mainstream topics can be good, but you have to find another approach, for example. I'm dealing with Basque nationalism, which is like very overwritten topic, but I found a way how to make it interesting. I'm doing comparative study with another case study, I choose some theories, so that's the way how you can make mainstream topic, uh, from first sight boring uh, topic, interesting. Uh, so that's the question of methodology, when methodology matters. So you, for example, choosing comparative study can be interesting, the way how to do it. And my last point, um, quality matters more than quantity. So, um, yeah, the longer bibliography, the better, <coughs> of course, but relevant, it has to be relevant. So, that's... All right, this gentleman had, had a yeah. question, right? <coughs> Uh, I, it wasn't very clear for me what was the difference between uh, the, the bibliography and the uh, literature review. The literature review is a chapter of your, of your proposal, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how the literature answers or doesn't answer your question. What, what I the literature has in got bibliography. And the bibliography is just a list of all the books that, that you have uh, consulted. Yeah? The so bibliography the is what you put at the end <coughs> in alphabetical order. Uh, yeah, I know. The authors who have been used and, and applied in your research proposal. And the literature review is a chapter. It's a written chapter. Mm -hmm. of, but, of the, the the mm -hmm. but the content the, of the literature review, does it uh, contain the, the connection with my project or my research? To the bibliography, basically, you know? 
Well, of course, I mean, you will have the same authors. That, is that what you mean? You will have the same authors listed yeah. in the bibliography and More the ones or less, that, yeah. that you are dealing with in the literature review, no? Uh, yes. Yeah. The literature review is, is a chapter, you know. What does the literature say about your topic? Yeah? Okay. What, what are the different, different opinions? What are the debates, for example, about your topic? Or what is missing very often, you know, what is missing from the literature that you are going to supply. Yeah? All right. Any, any other questions? Just to add on to this, this literature review, uh, <coughs> for example, when I did my research proposal, uh, I ended my literature review with my research question. So mm -hmm. it's kind yes. of sum up. You're supporting <coughs> your yes, your research, research question, question comes out of uh, out of the literature. Exactly. Yeah, it's going to be part of your thesis. Then the literature is yeah. much yeah. longer, of yeah. course. But yeah. okay. Well, thank you very much. Then good luck. <laughs>